<laughs> Whoops. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who may have never watched one of my videos before, hi, I'm Kelly. I lived in Germany for about 18 months and I just moved back to the US a few months ago and I am really, really missing some German food. So I thought about it and I decided I should just take a whole day where I cook and eat like I would if I were still in Germany. And I'm taking you guys on this little adventure with me. And the first stop is the grocery store. I think it could be interesting for some of the German viewers out there to see like the price differences between the US and Germany because I'm pretty convinced at this point that it's way more expensive to eat in the US than it is in Germany, or at least eat healthy. And then maybe you can guess what I'll be cooking throughout the day based on what ingredients I'm picking up. And then we'll come back to my apartment and I'll just start cooking and I'll show you guys what kind of food, what I know about it, where I've eaten it, any interesting stories I can come up about it. And yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let's head to the grocery store. the dice Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, I put all the groceries away and now it's time for me to have some coffee. Unfortunately, I can't really get German coffee very easily in the United States. There are some German specialty stores throughout the US and here in DC we have one called German Gourmet, which I actually made a video about that you can check out. I'll put the link in the description. So instead I got Zeke's Coffee. Zeke's is a local coffee shop here in DC and I really like their coffee. Um, and I'm going to make it using a French press. This one is insulated, that's why it's not like clear glass like you normally see French presses being made um, because that's how I prefer to make my coffee. Okay, so for breakfast, I'm going to have something that I saw everywhere throughout Germany. Guys, I stayed in more hotels than you could ever imagine me staying in Germany, and I saw a lot of hotel breakfast buffets. And then when I wasn't at a hotel, I was going to breakfast buffets on the weekend anyway, and it was very, very different from what you'd see in the US. I mean, that goes for all of Europe, really, the whole world uh, but we'll focus on Germany because that's where I lived uh, in the US we have a lot of like sweets uh, we have waffles we have pancakes we have a lot of muffins we have a lot of like dessert type breakfast foods that we cover in syrup and sugar and so on um, you'll also see fruit and bacon and sausage and eggs of course but it's very much like a sweeter, you know, array of options. Whereas in Germany, they have a lot of sweet options as well, but primarily they focus on having a lot of good quality breads. They have a lot of cold cut meats, uh, cheeses, sliced cheeses. They have a lot of fruits, a lot of yogurt, a lot of muesli, which is like, um, like an OD cereal type um, food. And they also had a lot of like sliced vegetables, like cucumbers and bell peppers and tomatoes. And that became like my favorite thing to eat uh, for breakfast in Germany because it just felt really healthy. You were having something lighter uh, to start your day off with. So I'm going to make something that I would typically have had or make for myself uh, from these breakfast buffets, which is just basically a roll uh, sliced, and I'm going to make an open sandwich out of it, where I put some cream cheese on there, like a soft cheese, and some sliced cheese. I take cold cuts, 
and I'll throw a pickle on there to go along with it to add some flavor. And then I'm going to have some sliced vegetables. All right, so I was able to pretty much make exactly what I described and I'm excited to eat it. Uh, one more note about the pickles, like it was kind of beyond me to eat pickles for breakfast. I just didn't really think about having that sort of flavor, um, that very strong vinegary taste uh, so early on in the day, but I've really gotten into the habit of eating pickles on these sort of things. Um, Especially my boyfriend makes this sort of thing all the time and I'm always stealing bites from him So, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much the standard breakfast uh, that I would have eaten in Germany All right, it is finally lunchtime and I am actually really hungry and probably should have started cooking a little earlier because this dish, I have a feeling, is going to take me some time to make. I've never made it before, uh, so I'm hoping for the best. I am making Maltaschen, and Maltaschen is a dish that comes from the region of Germany called Schwabia, uh, and it's basically in the southwestern part of Germany, and kind of just south of where I lived in Germany, which was the city of Mainz. And Maltaschen was introduced to me by my boyfriend. It's one of his favorite dishes. It's similar in structure to ravioli, uh, where it's like a dough pocket and it's filled with like a meat mixture or some sort of vegetable mixture. Uh, but it is much, much larger than what you might be thinking of for ravioli. So usually a Maltaschen uh, a piece of maltasha is like the size of your palm of your hand uh, and then it is served very differently too um, usually I see it served in like a soup like a very clear broth I'll be making the dough first and the ingredients are pretty standard for pasta um, I unfortunately am just going to be using regular all-purpose Flour, definitely not like the best flour that you can use to make pasta and I have an Italian friend who would be very disappointed with me uh, for making it with just regular flour but that's what I've got and that's what we're rolling with. Okay I have my sad dough ball formed and sitting at room temperature for 30 minutes. Uh, I don't think it's going to turn out that great but let's, uh, let's keep positive about it right? Um, so I'm going to work on the uh, mixture that will go inside of my maltaschen. Um, I'm doing a beef mixture. I asked Misha, who's truly benefiting from this video, guys. Uh, I asked him what kind of meat he would want me to use, chicken, pork, or beef, and he said he'd like beef. So that's what I'm making. Um, and it's going to have some spinach in it and some onions and some other things. Okay, so I think the weirdest part of this recipe is this part where I'm supposed to take four slices of bread and soak it in water and then whenever uh, it's done soaking, I squeeze the water out of the bread and then I crumble it onto my meat and spinach and onion like mixture that I'm going to be putting inside the maltasha. Um, so soak in water and then crumble doesn't really like go uh, make a lot of sense in my mind, but I will do as it says. Okay, and now for the part I've been very curious about. I've got my soaked bread here. It feels really disgusting, like, like I'm playing with my food. And I'm squeezing the water out and it is it's kind of just falling apart I thought it would just become like a mushy like I don't know like play-doh clay mess but it's crumbling I'm feeling pretty confident about the the filling right now I think it looks like it's on the right track I'm very nervous about my dough I don't think it was going so well. I don't know if it was just like the flour or if I had the ratio off, um, but I had a lot of difficulty 
uh, kneading the dough, which is never a good sign. I even took like a cooking class in Italy uh, where I properly made pasta with the direction of a professional and uh, it seems like all of that knowledge went right out the window. It looks pretty good. This is the uh, mixture right now. I was supposed to um, drain the spinach. It was a little wet and I should have blotted it with a paper towel before putting it in here. So the mixture might be a little heavier with water than it was intended to be. Okay, let's see how bad the dough is. By the way, I cut up sandwich baggies to make uh, saran wrap because I didn't have any saran wrap. All right, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It's definitely more uh, like Play-Doh than I think it should be. Um, but we're gonna roll with it. The other really fun thing that I'm dealing with uh, when I decided to make this dish, having hardly any preparation, <laughs> is that I don't own a rolling pin anymore. I got rid of mine at some point along the way because I was just never really making anything that required one. Um, so I will be using a can to roll out the dough. This is a jar of applesauce <laughs> that I bought from the Amish whenever I went home last. Home being Pennsylvania. All right, after quite a bit of labor. I've been able to roll out, I guess, a little over half the dough so far. Um, I'm pretty impressed with what I was able to do given the uh, tools and <laughs> the fact that I just wasn't really confident in uh, the dough's texture. But it's not too bad. Um, I think it'll work. It definitely could be rolled out thinner. Um, but I think it's, it's good for, for dumplings, basically. So I'm going to cut it into some squares and put the meat mixture in, seal it up, and get it ready for frying. So being that this is my first time ever making maltoshin from scratch, I'm not too concerned about the way it looks. I'm more concerned about making sure the mixture doesn't uh, like pop out. All right, I've got my pieces of maltasha. Um, I've got nine. They don't look great, guys. I'll be the first person to admit that these look like really, really sad pieces of maltasha, but I'm hoping that they will still taste good. finally ready to sit down and eat some maltoshin. Uh, Misha's on his way right now, but I can't help myself but try it to see how it turned out. I'm really curious about the dough. I mean, I'm curious about the whole thing. <laughs> um, I fried some onions too to go along with it, uh, which I am excited about as well. I really love fried onions. And so yeah, let's check it out. pleasantly surprised. It turned out way better than I had expected to. Um, I think I could have added more salt to the um, spinach meat mixture, even though I felt like I added a lot. The dough turned out, it fried up all right. Um, I think it's a tasty little dish. I loved Malatasha in, in Germany whenever I would go to restaurants and order it. And Misha made it for me a couple times, but it was like the frozen version, how you can buy like frozen ravioli. He bought frozen uh, mild tashim. I've never made it from scratch. So I knew coming into this that I love mild tashin. I just didn't know if I would love my mild tashin. And I think, I think, uh, I think it's a keeper. I might make this again in the future, try to improve on it, try to make it look a little bit more appetizing. Um, maybe I will try some different mixtures to go uh, inside. Uh, and I might try the soup version as well, the Maltasha Zupa. Um, I, I like the fried stuff though, but uh, I think the soup's pretty tasty as well. Alright, I realize right now that I completely forgot my drink, which is something that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So one of my favorite things to drink in uh, Germany, well there were a lot of favorite things, I mean it's the land of beer guys, um, was 
car one, carbonated water, um, and also apple shola, which is basically just apple juice that's been cut with carbonated water. So I like apple juice, but I mean like a lot of juices, it's just too much, like it's too sweet, um, it's kind of like overwhelming, and it's not something that I really find refreshing or that I would gravitate towards um, drinking on my own, but when you cut it with carbonated water, it is so good. And in Germany, they sell it as this mixture. It's called apple shola. In the US, the only places I can find apple shola are, are like those specialty German stores that I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, you just kind of have to make it yourself, which, I mean, isn't too complicated. It's literally just apple juice and carbonated water. So that's what I'm going to be drinking with my Malatashin today. Perfect. Carbonated water in the U.S. is starting to become way more popular than I remember it being like before I left for Germany uh, about two years ago. Uh, but it's kind of sad because it's sold in like a lot of like small cans or small bottles. Um, usually it's like flavored as well. Uh, whereas in Germany you could buy plain carbonated water in like basically like one liter bottles. Uh, so it's a lot less wasteful. Um, of course, you can recycle in the U.S., but we bought a DrinkMate machine, which allows you to carbonate your own water in these reusable um, plastic bottles, which works out really well. So Misha and I are constantly refilling our water bottles and carbonating it uh, and drinking it throughout the day. It's really good, and I'm glad that we have a way to be able to drink carbonated water without buying like 60 cans of carbonated water every single week. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep eating this, and I will see you for the next little meal, if you can call it a meal, and I'll explain to you why. Okay, I'm back wearing a different shirt because I messed up my last one, and I decided to finally put my hair back. Um, but it is my favorite part of the day, which is coffee and kuchen time, which basically just means coffee and cake. Uh, in Germany, it's very traditional, I would say, to go and get a piece of cake and, and drink it with some coffee in the afternoon. Um, and I've got a little bit of a sweet tooth, so I really enjoyed this part of living in Germany. Um, for today, though, I'm not going to make like a traditional cake, uh, really just because I don't want a massive cake sitting around. Um, so I was looking and thinking of some different things that I could make that would still kind of like go along with the theme here, and I decided to go with Kaiserschmarrn. Um, Kaiserschmarrn is a sweet dish that I think originated in Austria, but it's popular in a lot of different countries and regions, and it's very popular in Bavaria. Um, and I actually didn't even have it in Germany when I first ate Kaiserschmarrn. I had it in Zagreb, Croatia. Like I said, it's popular in a lot of different countries, and it was definitely not called Kaiserschmarrn in Croatia. Um, but Kaiserschmarrn means, Kaiser means emperor, and then Schmarrn refers to sort of like a scrambled dish. So Kaiserschmarrn is like a pancake that's been scrambled or basically like torn into a bunch of little pieces. Um, and you can serve it with a like a sauce, like a vanilla sauce, or I think I've seen it with ice cream, I've seen it with applesauce, um, but I more commonly see it served with just like some powdered sugar on it and like a side of fruit or like a fruit sauce. Um, today I, okay, so I made Kaiserschmarrn before guys, like a couple weeks ago, and I tried to make it with a vanilla sauce, um, and it was the first time I've ever made a vanilla sauce, and I, epically failed. Um, it was awful, so I had to have my French friend come over here and rescue me from my misery and teach me how to really make a proper vanilla sauce. Um, so I'm just not going to bother with that today. I'm going to serve it with powdered sugar and a side of strawberries. Maybe I've got some jam, maybe I'll serve it with that as well. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about it because I think it's a really good dish. And so let's get cooking. This is a different recipe from what I made before, so I'm trying it out, see if I like it more. Um, it calls for raisins, uh, so the last one I made did not. So I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to turn out. Alright, so this recipe called for um, the egg whites to be beaten until stiff, so that's what I just spent the last like five minutes doing. Um, and then you fold it over into the batter, so 
<laughs> Let's see how this goes for me. Now we pulled in the raisins. All right, so the batter is ready and now I'm going to heat up the frying pan with some butter and start cooking it. You're supposed to let it sit until one side gets, uh, like the bottom gets cooked and then flip it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, that, this pan has like these really, um, you know, straight walls. So I don't know how I'm going to get my spatula in there to flip it. I should have thought that through better, but I didn't. <laughs> um, so while this is cooking, I just wanted to share with you like the story that I heard about how Kaiser Schmarrn came to be. And I heard that it was from an emperor in Austria. I think Francis Joseph the first, um, was traveling and he stopped somewhere to eat and the cook um, that was making food for him was trying to make this nice pancake um, with all the finest ingredients that he had. And when he went to go flip the pancake, it got messed up, which I'm sure is what's about to happen to me. And so he just kind of salvaged what he could and he made it into like this scrambled dish where it was just like pieces of pancake. Um, and he covered it in plum sauce, hoping that um, the Kaiser wouldn't really notice it uh, and the Kaiser ended up loving it and so that's why it's called Kaiser Schmarrn named after this emperor. Wow okay so the whole flipping thing did not go as I was hoping it would um, but thankfully this whole dish according to the myth or the legend uh, was based on a similar mistake so uh, I got that going for me I'm right on path. <laughs> I'm going to let this keep cooking, get a little crispier, hopefully, um, and start making the coffee to go with my Kaiser Schmarrn. All right, my Kaiser Schmarrn is almost ready to eat, but I'm going to sprinkle some powdered sugar on top. So as you can see, I decided to serve it with just fresh strawberries. I'm sure I could have sugared the strawberries to get them um, a little juicier and more like a sauce, uh, but I decided to just go with fresh strawberries and some nice Kaiser Schmarrn. And here's my coffee and cheers. All right, let's see how it tastes. I gotta say that's a lot better Kaiser Schmarrn um, than what I made before. It was, a, like I said, it was a different recipe. This recipe was a little bit more complex because the first one, I wasn't supposed to beat the egg whites and all that, but I read more about Kaiser Schmarrn and found that that really is a traditional way of making it. So then I was on the path to find a more traditional recipe, which brought me to this one. Um, and it's, it's really good. I'm not sure if I'm sold on having the raisins. I saw a few recipes where you could soak the raisins in rum and then put it into the Kaiser Schmarrn. So I have to admit, I am a little curious about how that would change at least the texture of the raisins, if not like the flavor of the entire dish. Um, so maybe I'll do that in the future. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out, uh, especially given my horrible uh, flipping skills. Um, all right, let's try it with a strawberry. That's really good. It's very similar to how I remember having it uh, in Germany and especially that first time when I had it in Croatia. Uh, I remember, and I'm getting that feeling now, whenever I had it the first time I was like, man, I wish I had some syrup to go along with this because I'm just so used to, in America, we eat uh, pancakes with syrup. And so, you know, you can take the girl out of the U.S., but you can't necessarily take the U.S. out of the girl. So I definitely still have those tendencies to eat it the way I always eaten it, especially as a kid. Um, but I, I do really like it this way. It truly does not need syrup. That's me just trying to uh, give in to my old habits. And that reminds me, I will put all the recipes for everything that I made in the description below if you want to make it on your own. Um, definitely don't watch my cooking video. This video is not meant to be like a cooking tutorial because I clearly don't really know what I'm doing. It's more of just like a, an exposure to the way that I ate in Germany. And I'm really excited to show you guys what I have coming up for dinner.
All right, I'm going to get started on dinner or Abendessen now, even though it's still kind of early in the day because it's going to take a while to cook it. I'm going to be making goulash served with spätzle. Now, goulash is another dish that didn't exactly originate from Germany. It originated in Hungary, but it's really popular in Germany. But similar to the German donor, uh, the goulash dish has definitely become a part of German cuisine. You can make it with beef or pork or you can make it with wild game like venison or wild boar and I'm kind of kicking myself because I have a freezer full of elk meat that my parents gave me and I didn't think to defrost any of it so I'm going to be making my goulash with beef. And I'm going to serve the goulash alongside Spätzle and Spätzle is another Schwäbisch dish similar to the Maltaschen that I made for lunch or Mittagessen and it is from like the Baden-Württemberg uh, state of Germany. Now I've eaten Spätzle pretty much all of my life. Uh, see my parents, they also lived in Germany and they picked it up along the way and my mom just loves Spätzle so she's always served it to our family um, but I've never made it myself. She did, however, buy me a Spätzle maker years ago. I, I honestly think she gave this to me when I first moved from college to my first uh, residence in Texas. So it's been like a decade that I've owned this, brought this from every single house that I've lived in, which is so many, and I still have never used it until today. So I'm excited to finally get some use out of this and see how it's going to work out. And I'm sure my mom will also be very excited to hear that I finally used it. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and start with the goulash. It has to simmer for quite a long time. So I'm gonna make that and then Hours later, I'll come back and make the spatula so that it's fresh by the time I'm ready to eat the goulash. Uh, first thing is to brown the meat, and I am really getting my use out of this pan today. I think I've used it for every single meal that I've cooked, except for breakfast, because I don't know if you can really count that as cooking. So the recipe calls for some fresh herbs like thyme and rosemary and fortunately my mom was nice enough to give me a bunch of potted herbs uh, the last time that I was visiting her in Pennsylvania. So I have the freshest of herbs coming straight from the actual plant that I'm going to put into the goulash. <laughs> for my goulash and I'm supposed to let this simmer for about two to three hours while I find something else to occupy my time and at which point I'll probably make the spätzle and get ready to eat. All right it is finally time to make the spätzle the last thing that I will be cooking on this day. I don't think I've cooked this much in a very long time maybe only on Thanksgiving. Um, so I've already got the eggs beaten here. I've got a cup of flour in my bowl. I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. The recipe tells me to go back and forth between adding milk and eggs. So we're gonna see how that works out. I've never done that before. Um, and then it'll be the fun part of using my little spätzle tool here, spätzle tool. All right, the dough's ready. Time to get real. You can see my goulash here is still simmering. Okay, it looks like the water is boiling, so um, I guess I'm gonna put the dough into here. Okay, the spätzle looks really good. Um, I'm going to basically drain it um, and then I'm going to saute it in butter to get it a little bit more crispy. Okay, I am finally ready to sit down and eat my last meal of the day. I've got a German beer here which I'm really looking forward to after this long day of cooking. And I tasted the goulash earlier. It was pretty tasty. Misha helped me salt it because I always undersalt things so I'm Really excited to try it and I'm curious about the spätzle. 
So let's try the goulash first. Wow, that's really good. Dare I say this is a perfect goulash and I do not talk about my cooking like that often. The meat is really tender. It just fell apart in my mouth and I'm really glad that I did take the three hours to simmer this dish, checking on it constantly. It was worth all of my effort because it is really good. But let's try the spetzla. The spetzla could use some work. Um, I think it's quite under salted, so next time I need to remember to add a lot more. Um, but it's spetzla. I mean, this is a pretty good representation of what I would have eaten in Germany, and it's a good way, I think, to top off my day of cooking and eating like I would if I were in Germany. Guys, in the comments, let me know what your favorite food is, whether it's German food or something entirely outside of German cuisine. I love food and I always love hearing about what kind of foods people are eating, especially around the world. Um, and if you have any cooking tips for me, please let me know because I think it's pretty apparent that I, I need some help, guys. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it and eating all of this food. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome for the support you've given me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!